holiday season, give the gift of play to all kinds of kids. At Central Christian Church, we are committed to providing a safe place for kids of all abilities to play together by building an all-inclusive playground called Kids Unlimited. But we need your help. This is the perfect time to partner with us to bring this dream to reality. With your generous contributions, this spring and summer we'll see the launch of something brand new for kids who deserve our very best. Go to centralwire.com slash kidsunlimited and make your donation today. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our online service for Central Christian Church in Janesville. Uh, my name is Kellen Anderson. I'm the campus pastor of our Janesville campus and just want to welcome you uh, to our service. I hope that you guys uh, have had a great week and can just join in worshiping with us. Uh, I'm going to be preaching a, a sermon out of the series that we're doing in our Christmas series called Breakthrough in just a little while. Uh, and at the end of that sermon, we're going to take communion together. And so go ahead and grab uh, stuff for communion, whether it's uh, some juice or water or some bread or crackers or whatever you got. Uh, but we want to take communion at the end of service. But uh, right now, we're just going to dive right into some worship. And so I'm going to pray and invite you uh, to join with us. Lord, thank you so much for today. Uh, and what a great day it is uh, to be able to worship you wherever we're at, whether we're in a home whether we're in a church service, whether we're in our car, driving somewhere, God, wherever we might be, uh, we can worship you. And so God, we, we ask that you open our hearts to truly give you our worship right now. We love you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Now let's sing these songs of thanksgiving. That would be hopeless. Without your goodness, I would be desperate. Without your love, I'd sleep to the darkness. And if it wasn't for the cross, for you have won me with your kindness. You chased me down. Church, let's sing that. Sing hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I was a prisoner, but now I'm not. With your blood, you bought my freedom. Oh, hallelujah. For the cross. Sing with me, all my shame, yeah, all my shame was met with mercy, and now your mercy will be my soul, and all the glory, and all the power of the cross. Oh, come on, church, sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah. I'm here. 
you, Jesus. I was a prisoner, but now I'm not. With your blood, you bought my freedom. Oh, hallelujah for the cross. God's faithfulness. And God of Abraham, you're the God of covenant and faithful promises. And time and time again, you have proved you'll do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast and let my heart when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Cause great is your faithfulness to me. Yes, great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting same, I will praise your Your faithfulness to me. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. God, from age to age, though the earth may pass away. Your truth remains the same Your history can prove There's nothing you can do You're faithful and true Though the storms may come And the winds may blow I remain steadfast And let my heart know When you speak a word It will come to pass Come on church Sing great your faithfulness to me. Great is your faithfulness to me. From the rising sun to the setting sun, I will praise your name. And great is your faithfulness to me. Yes, you are, yes, you are. You're so faithful. Yes, you are, yes, you are. I put my faith in Jesus, my anchor to the ground, my hope and firm foundation. I put my faith in Jesus, my 
This is The Loop. Just want to let you know things that are going on with our Janesville campus. Uh, first thing, we, we've made a decision on when we're going to have our Christmas Eve service at Pontiac Convention Center. It's going to be at 4 o'clock on Christmas Eve, December 24th. Uh, so we'd love for you to come and join with us. Uh, we, if you go to our website, centraljanesville.com, we do have uh, on there an RSVP that you can fill out so that we know that you're coming. Um, but if you can't make it uh, in person with us, we are gonna have an online service. And, and it's really cool, we're, we're, we're kinda joining together all of our campuses, making a, just a great online Christmas Eve service for you. And so that'll be online for you at four o'clock as well. Love for you to join with us, either, either one of those, in person or online. Uh, another thing I wanna let you know about, if you go to centralwired.com uh, backslash ballot, uh, we have an annual leadership and budget information guide there for you, uh, letting you know uh, what our what our leadership looks like, our our, our elders and deacons, um, and as well as our budget for the year 2021. And so we'd love for you to go there, check it out, and also you know if you find this to if you consider this to be your church home, uh, we'd ask that you would uh, fill out at the bottom of it. There is a um, a yes or no as far as uh, accepting. Uh, the, the budget for next year, and we'd love for you to fill that out. It, it shouldn't take more than a couple minutes. And so again, that's centralwire.com backslash, backslash ballot. Uh, and the last thing I got for you today is we're, we're continuing uh, to ask if you would uh, like to give to Wilson Elementary School. Uh, we wanna bless the teachers there this Christmas season. Um, they don't have a parent-teacher organization uh, that the, where the principal can, can take some funds out of that and just bless the, the, the teachers there. And so we want to do that and, and be a part of that. And so if you'd like to give to that, go to our online giving. Uh, if you, if you want to give your tithes as well, you can go to the, the same place. Go online, centraljanesville.com, or go to the, our Give app, G-Y-V-E, and you can go to the drop-down link, Wilson Giving, or just to our normal giving if that's also what you want to do today. Um, I'm so glad that you guys are a part of this this church and this church service. I uh, just hope you, you guys have a great rest of the service. Uh, this has been The Loop. Now you're in it. If your family is anything like mine, I'm guessing you've probably been watching lots and lots of Christmas movies this Christmas season. And why? Because, frankly, it's 2020. What else is there to do? Uh, Look at how early everybody has been putting up Christmas decorations. It's like we need all the good Christmas spirit that we can muster up this year. And still to this day, one of my all-time favorite Christmas movies is Home Alone. Uh, what's not to love about a family forgetting their eight-year-old child at home for Christmas? And even better is when they do it again in Home Alone 2 the next year. Uh, funny thing I realized uh, actually watching Home Alone 2 again this year, after the family finds Kevin in New York uh, and they wake up in their luxurious hotel and they've got all these awesome presents sitting there. Kevin still manages to get away and escape again all alone to go and give a present to the homeless lady in Central Park. Now no way that kid is going anywhere alone for another five years if it's my kid. But I guess some parents they just don't care as much about keeping their kids and not losing their kids. I, Take my dad, my, my dad, we, he took off at a gas station without me when I was 10 years old. And we were three hours away from home. We all walked into the, the gas station, getting some treats and going to the bathroom and, and I walk out and this car is gone. Thinking it was a joke, I, I walked back behind the gas station, they weren't there. Uh, and the guys that were in the car with my dad had to tell my dad a mile down the road that I wasn't in the car. My dad forgot all about me. But I guess parents do that. I'm actually not innocent on the topic of forgetting about your kids. Uh, when Sadie was about one years old, one year old, uh, she got away from me at a mall uh, where we were playing in this, one of those play areas at the mall. And there was a couple other adults also. And you just kind of start to think that one of the other adults is watching the kids or whatever. And she got away from me. I was absolutely freaking out. Uh, but some saint of a woman picked her up 
and then just started looking for the parent near, nearby who was freaking out, and she spotted me. Forgetting your child somewhere is a horrible feeling, but being forgotten isn't too great of a feeling either. Uh, if I were to guess, I'm thinking that some of you today are feeling a little bit forgotten about in the year 2020. Maybe it's your parents that you feel have forgotten about you. Maybe it's a spouse or maybe it is an ex who uh, you just can't get over the fact that they really did forget about you. But I'd be even more willing to bet that some of you, you feel like God has forgotten you. And listen, it, it may have nothing to do with 2020. Maybe you're just in a personal uh, dry spell spiritually. Maybe it feels like it's been years since God has listened to your cries for mercy. Or maybe it has everything to do with 2020. You've lost loved ones or you've battled financial difficulties, depression, illness. And maybe in your head you know God is there, but in your heart it just doesn't feel like it anymore. And that, my friends, can be a hard place to be in and continue to give your heart over to Jesus. It can be a hard place to keep on giving Him your praise. This Christmas, this morning, right now, I believe that we can experience a breakthrough. I believe that God is always at work showing himself to us. But sometimes we maybe aren't great at listening. This morning, we're going to take a look at the story of Zechariah to find out how he experienced his own personal breakthrough that led to real praise. If you've ever felt like God has forgotten you, Zechariah is a great person to look, for, to, look to for some encouragement. I want to give you a brief overview kind of of this story of Zechariah that we find in Luke chapter 1. Zechariah was a priest who was the husband of a woman named Elizabeth. And I want you to listen to what verse 6 says about both of these people. It says, Both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. That seems like some pretty high praise, right? Well, the original language that was used here implies kind of more of a religious piety than an ethical purity. In other words, Zechariah was a good priest who observed all the rules that he was supposed to as a good Orthodox Jewish priest. But despite all of their rule following, the next verse says that this blameless couple was also childless. And worse yet, they were really old, like like past the age of having children old. But despite that, We have zero indication whatsoever that they had become bitter over Elizabeth's barrenness. They've continued to devote themselves fully to God. And then the greatest day in Zechariah's life comes. He gets the opportunity of a lifetime to, he's chosen to go into the temple of the Lord to burn incense. Now a priest would really only get one crack at this opportunity. And so this was big for him. But on his special day, with his family and friends waiting for him to come out of the temple, because, again, they're there for his big day, an angel of the Lord visits him while he's in that temple. And Zechariah, understandably, he gets freaked out, but the angel attempts to calm him down. And when he goes, he goes on and he tells Zechariah that his wife is about to have a baby boy, and they're to name him John. And he tells him about all these awesome things about how this young man is He's going to bring people back to God, about how he's going to prepare the way for the Lord. Uh, this kid's going to be the real deal. But Zechariah, as, as I think we all would be, he gets a little bit skeptical. And yeah, Zechariah knows about God giving Abraham and Sarah a child when Sarah was super old. But that stuff doesn't just, it doesn't happen to regular people like him and Elizabeth. Now, that stuff is like the stuff of legend, right? Now, I've prayed for miracles myself. Uh, without really believing that it was in the realm of possibility of it happening to me. We all know what it feels like uh, to feel like I'm just a regular person. Why would God do something amazing in my life? You see, it's not always being forgotten by God that's difficult for us. Sometimes we can't even fathom being remembered by God. We just don't think he's going to do it. Uh, Zechariah couldn't believe that the angel uh, was saying that it could really be so. Uh, And so here's what Luke records in Luke chapter 1, verses 18 through 20 about what happened here. He says, Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I've been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words which will come true 
at their appointed time. So Zechariah comes out of the temple and the dude can't speak, not a word. And finally, after presumably nine full months, the baby comes. But get this, Zechariah still couldn't immediately speak. It was another, after another eight days after John was born, this is what happens. Verse 59, it starts off. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise a child. And they were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. But his mother spoke up and said, no, he is to be called John. And they said to her, there is no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, his name is John. And immediately, his mouth was open and his tongue set free, and he began to speak, praising God. What do you think was going on in Zechariah's head during those eight days between John being born and John going for his circumcision? If I were Zechariah, I would have been expecting that the moment my son was born, God was going to open up my vocal cords again, at least based on what the angel had said. That seems, I mean, that's what I'd be believing. That seems like what he was saying. So I imagine that those, those were pretty stressful eight days for Zechariah. That dude had had to have been wondering if God had just forgotten about him completely. Now, I really see three stages of feeling forgotten. I think that Zechariah could have been going through in this story. And frankly, it reminds me a bit of the stages that I go through in my own life. And maybe it's going to resonate with you a little bit. Stage one is this. God is quiet, but it's to be expected. Now, where do we see this stage playing out in his life where God's quiet, but it's expected? After he doubts that what the angel is telling him about Elizabeth getting pregnant is real, all of a sudden he can't talk, but it was to be expected. It's what he was told was going to happen to him. He knows that he has nine months of not being able to talk that's, that's going to happen. And this is just, this is what it was. Now, you've been in, in a spot like this. You don't enjoy your work, and you'd love for God to make a change for you, but it's paying the bills, and you're taken care of. You can deal with it. Or you've suffered a health setback, and the doctors say that you've got six months of recovery process ahead of you. And it stinks, but you know what to expect. It's going to get better. You're not thinking God is... He's got to heal you in in an instant. It's okay. Now, what was Zechariah's response during stage one? It was probably just to get up each day and keep on going. Keep on going. It's going to be okay. You know, the angel hadn't given him a death sentence. It's just nine months, that's all. Nine months and he he could talk again. Many of us feel forgotten about in minor ways like this, but we don't lose hope because we see a brighter future ahead. Submitting to God in a time like this, it's not impossible. Uh, Giving him our praise is actually still fairly easy. But I think even more importantly, are we letting these times of God's quiet become times where we seek him? Are we letting these be moments uh, where, where we seek to grow in him? Or do we just seek to get through the situation unscathed? The answer to that may have a lot to do with how you end up responding if you find yourself getting to stage two. Stage two is God is quiet and it feels like he's doing something wrong. Now, yeah, you heard me exactly. I said it exactly how I meant to say it. It feels like God is doing something wrong. I'm talking here about those eight days between John's birth and John's circumcision. Uh, Because those were days where Zechariah, man, he still wasn't talking. God still hadn't opened up his vocal cords. Now, you've been in a spot like this too, I'm sure. That, that job that you hate, well, you finally saw the light at the end of the tunnel that you weren't sure was ever going to come. And you finally were up for that promotion. But it didn't come through. And now you're questioning everything about what God could possibly be doing in your life. He sure doesn't seem to have much control in getting you where you were meant to be at this point. Or that health issue that you had. You've gone past the six months. It's been eight months and there's been actually very little improvement. In fact, if anything, it seems like everything has gotten worse. What was Zechariah's response during this stage two where it seems like God's gotten it wrong? He had faith to keep in obedience to what God had called him to. You see, the one thing that he still hadn't done at this point in that eight-day span was he hadn't had the opportunity to name his son John. The angel had told him, in essence, naming him John was part of the deal. 
And when his voice wasn't restored, the moment that John was born, man, Zechariah could have either decided that God had totally forgotten him, or he could have held on to hope that God's plan wasn't quite as clear as he might have at first assumed it was. Have you ever assumed that God's plan was clearer than it really was, and you didn't realize it until way long after the fact? Um, you might be sure that God, what he wants for you, but you still can't be certain for how he's actually going to carry, carry it through. The temptation when his plan proves to be a, diff, a bit different than we expect, the temptation here is to just throw in the towel. The temptation is to think, God should have changed my circumstance by now. God should have come through for me by now. He must have forgotten about me. This stage is the most dangerous stage. And it's the stage where it's hardest to continue giving praise to God. Uh, but then we can get to stage three. If we can get through stage one, stage two, a lot of times what happens is we get to stage three where God shows up and all is made right. So this is where God's forgetfulness, it just seems to go away. But you realize that, in, in fact, it, it wasn't forgetfulness that you were seeing at all. And we're going to get back to the stage in a bit. But we've all gone through the stages of feeling forgotten. We've all felt that need for a breakthrough, that moment of getting to the place where God shows up and he does what he does. Uh, well, God does give us breakthroughs. God does show up and he does do what he do. Uh, that's what we say in like basketball, like, man, he do what he do. Uh, God does show up and he do what he do. But maybe you haven't seen the breakthrough yet that you want to see. Maybe you're not expecting the breakthrough for a while and you're content still in the process. Maybe you've come to the place where you feel the, the breakthrough is long overdue. Here's a question that I have for you today that we need to answer. Are you willing to hold on to faith that God knows when and how your breakthrough needs to happen more than you know the how and the when? Are you willing to praise and honor God even during the moments when you truly feel forgotten about? Because God's ways are at times inconceivable to us and are way beyond our understanding, the bottom line is that there are going to be times where he's going to let things happen in our lives that don't make sense to us. Those times won't be easy, but you can either choose to remain faithful and follow him in those times and in the end find real growth taking place, or you can choose to pack it in and just assume that he really has forgotten all about you. There are so many places and contexts where God says in Scripture that he will never leave us or forsake us. He says it to so many people so many times that it's safe that I think we can adopt this theological understanding that he means that statement for every single one of us. One of those times, he says it in Hebrews 13, 5. It says, be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. Now, I'm sure that in those eight days after John was born, Zechariah may, may very well have assumed that God, in fact, had forsaken him. That moment that John came out of Elizabeth's womb, I wonder if John didn't open up his mouth and try to shout for joy and then realized his vocal cords still weren't open. And when he found that they hadn't been opened, I'm thinking that it may have put a bittersweet feeling on the joy of that day of him becoming a father. I wonder if John started to rehash what it was that maybe he had done wrong. Have I been doubting God? Have I been doubting that he would restore me? Did I, did I have a bad heart about losing my voice during these nine months and God's just choosing to make it permanent? Did I misunderstand what God was telling me this whole time? It's actually a little bit like waiting for an Amazon package to come these days. Let's be honest, at this point, Amazon could probably get away with only mailing like half of my packages and stealing all my money because I don't remember half of what I order. But sometimes I'll be like, man, shouldn't my Vikings hat have come by now? It's, it's the sixth today. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to come on the fifth. I'm gonna have to, man, I'm gonna have to let, write a letter to Jeff Bezos. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sue that dude, this is ridiculous. I know I get really impatient like that with God sometimes when things don't seem to happen exactly on my time frame. Uh, instead of questioning what we or someone else has done wrong that's kept God from showing up like we expected him to, maybe we need to consider if God's holding back for that moment when he can make the most impact. I want you to really think about that. Uh, making a grand appearance when nobody's around, it can, 
it can be really disappointing. Uh, at church, we, we usually wait until after the first song to give a little welcome and to say hi to everybody that, there that morning. And why do we wait till after the first song? It's because nobody's there during the beginning of the first song. Everyone's out in the lobby waiting around and, and then they hear the music and they come in or whatever. Everyone usually comes filing in during the first song. And so we, if, if we say hi and welcome to everybody before that first song, it's usually me just talking to the band and a handful of other do-gooders that are always everywhere on time. Sometimes I think God is just biding his time in order to make the impact that he wants to make in us and through us. And that gap of time can be really hard for us. It can be hard to keep praising God. It can be hard to keep trusting God. But ultimately, God is faithful, and he always shows up at some point, at the right point, at the point that he wants to show up. Uh, I love in the, the, the movie Lord of the Rings, Gandalf has this awesome line that's actually not in the book. And he says, a wizard shows up at precisely the time that a wizard chooses to show up. He's never late. I, I just love that idea. And, and I think that God is like that. At some point, God shows up to be gracious to us so that he can be gracious through us. That's the overall story of Zechariah's journey. God gave him a tough sentence. I can't imagine not being able to talk all of a sudden for nine months and eight days. In fact, some Something that, that he couldn't even hear either. Uh, Luke says that he was unable to speak, but the Greek word that he actually uses there can actually also mean deaf. And that's why some people think that's why that his family and friends were actually signing to him instead of talking to him the, on the day of John's circumcision. He was definitely given a difficult sentence for nine months and eight days. But get this, even God's rebuke of Zechariah was aimed at bringing good down the road. And how is that? God wasn't going to hold Zechariah down for good. His grace was given him right in the time where his words would be most impactful. God opened up his voice in the moment that would bring him the most glory. See, it's pretty unlikely that there was a crowd around to watch the birth of John. That's not something that most people want to see. I've watched something like it four times with my four children being born. I don't need to see it again. Okay, honestly, it's, it's the most magical thing ever. But that was my wife and my kids. If God had opened up his vocal cords in that moment when John was born, less people would have been around to witness it. But the day of the circumcision was a big day. It was a huge day in the event of this young man's life. And now again, it's not something that I want to watch, but, and I doubt others did either, but people were there. After the procedure took place, there were people there. And here's the cool thing to God's timing. While it may have felt all along to Zechariah that he'd been forgotten by God, this is how we know that God knew what he was doing. We know that he had a purpose. All the words that Zechariah could have said in the nine months of Elizabeth's pregnancy and the eight days leading up to John's circumcision could not have amounted to the importance of the beautiful moment of praise to God that Zechariah delivers after his voice is restored. It's awesome. That was the moment that God knew was coming, coming even in the dark moments when Zechariah was doubting. God was bringing Zechariah through the fire to bring his heart to a place where it would be ready to make an impact for him. God knew that he was going to show up to be gracious to Zechariah in just the right moment so that he could be gracious through Zechariah. So I want you to listen to the praise that came forth out of his mouth the moment that God opened his mouth. This is Zechariah, start, uh, Luke, ch Luke chapter 1, starting in verse 67. His father Zechariah was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he said through the holy prophets of long ago, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to his father Abraham, to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness, before him all, our, all of our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, 
to guide our feet into the path of peace. Zechariah might have felt for a while like God had forgotten him, but in this moment, it was all made right. In this moment, he spoke of God's tender mercy. He spoke of God guiding the feet of those living in darkness to find the path of peace. He spoke of salvation and rescue. It's amazing how when God does show up, all of a sudden we're awakened to how good he actually had been all along in what we thought was our darkness, our darkest hour. He was good during all of it. You may feel like you're in a time where God is absent. Maybe he's been quiet in your life, but it's okay because you kind of expect it. Or, or, or your faith is shaken because of it. Or maybe, uh, maybe he's quiet and it's at the point where, where you, <laughs> you're at your breaking point. It seems like he should have come through already at this point. I want to remind you today that God sees a bigger picture. God has something in mind that takes more things into consideration than you or I could ever imagine. In the end, he's going to, he's probably not going to set your whole world in perfect order, but if you're willing to keep trusting him and to keep praising him, even through the various stages of your loneliness, those moments that you feel forgotten, then you can trust that there's a moment coming where he'll show up loud and clear. And it's going to be better, a better breakthrough than you could have ever hoped for. God gives breakthroughs to those who choose to praise in the face of feeling forgotten. It takes faith to know that you're not forgotten when your feelings tell you that you are. Do you need to ask God this morning to restore your willingness and desire to praise him in all things? Do you need to begin to see that he is praiseworthy once again? Maybe you've felt so neglected by God that, that you've lost your heart to worship. No matter what stage you're in today, we have a reason to let our hearts be overcome with awe and gratitude for God. The biggest reason is Jesus. Jesus come into this world, Jesus dying on a cross for us. Do you want some of that awe restored to you this morning? Why don't you pray with me? God, I thank you so much that we can have awe in the person of Jesus, in who you are, no matter what we are going through, no matter how forgotten about we might feel like this morning. God, I thank you that we are not forgotten, that Jesus remembered us. He remembered every single one of our names while we were, uh, while we were on his mind while he was on the cross. God, I thank you so much that we are not forgotten. And God, I pray right now over those who, who really truly may feel that forgottenness, that loneliness. God, restore their sense of beauty and awe in who they see you as. God, I pray that you would, you would well up something within us, deep down in our soul, that would allow us to praise you even in the moments where we feel lost. Help us to remember Jesus to remember his grace and his goodness uh, in our darkest hour. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. What we're going to do right now is we're going to take communion together. And uh, one thing I love uh, from Scripture, it talks about how Jesus is close to the brokenhearted. Uh, Psalm 34, 18 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Uh, Jesus went through worse things for you than you've ever been asked to go through. If you've ever felt forgotten, I want you to think about the cross of Jesus. Um, Jesus himself said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Jesus knows what it feels like to be forgotten by his heavenly Father. And the reason he knows that is because it was our sin that was placed on him at that moment. Uh, we are not forgotten. Uh, Jesus remembers us. And as we take this time for communion, let's remember and thank him for never forgetting us. For, for giving up his body and his blood for us so that we might be forgiven. Why don't you pray with me? Lord, we thank you so much for your willing act to go to the cross for us. You know, during the, this Christmas season, we think so much about you coming into this world and being born into this world, but it was all for the purpose of going to the cross. God, I thank you that you were willing to do that. And Lord, we pray right now that you would, you would uh, help us all to be uh, just amazed at your grace. As we become amazed at your grace, we become people of your grace. That we live with your grace towards other people. Help us to do that. God, we thank you for your body and your blood given for us. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thanks so much everybody for joining us for our service today. Uh, glad that you could be with us and we hope if you haven't been able to come to church in a long time, we, we know that it's difficult and uh, hope that you are staying encouraged. Um, we, we'd love to have you come and be in person with us, but we also know that that's not, not always possible for everybody right now. Uh, know that we miss you. We love you. Uh, we hope the best for you. Hope that you guys have an incredibly great Christmas. Uh, let me just pray a quick prayer blessing and, and let you be on your way. Lord. I thank you so much for everybody that, that's been a part of this service. Uh, God, I pray that you would uh, guide our lives, guide our hearts uh, to be everything that you want us to be. Uh, God, we thank you for the story of Zechariah that we heard today, that you have not forgotten us. And God, for those who maybe do feel as though they've been forgotten uh, in a difficult 2020 year, God, remind us again that you are there with us every step of the way. Uh, God, we thank you so much for your goodness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Thanks everybody, have a great week. Look forward to seeing you soon.